Okay, I'd like to begin. Certainly want to thank you for being here today. I'm joined today by um, Common Council President Ashanti Hamilton, Chief Al Morales, and Lakeisha Butler, the Executive Director of the Fire and Police Commission. Uh, unfortunately, uh, District Attorney Chisholm, who wanted to be here, was pulled away at the last minute, so he will not be joining us. The purpose of this press conference is very simple and threefold. We wanted to take this as an opportunity to reiterate precisely what the Milwaukee Police Department vehicle pursuit policy is. Second of all, we wanted to discuss the consequences of fleeing from the police. And thirdly, we wanted to announce that we're in the very early stages of developing a public information campaign designed to get the word out across Milwaukee to all segments of the community along the same lines as I had indicated, that if you are committing crimes and flee from the police, the police will come after you. And we wanted that public relations effort to concentrate very heavily on young people. So with that, I'm going to call up uh, President of the Common Council, Ashanti Hamilton. Thank you, Alderman. This is the Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, so it's very appropriate that he uh, initiate this conversation around our pursuit policy and being able to have what I'm calling an intelligent conversation about this issue. If you would take a look back the past few years, and if you sat into any of our community meetings about public safety in the city of Milwaukee, at the top of that list would be reckless driving, speeding in the city of Milwaukee. And part of the, the concentration of this behavior in the city has been attributed to the internalizing on the street level the acceptance of the pursuit, quote unquote, pursuit policy as the way that they understood it to be. If you would take a look at the agendas for our youth council and the efforts that they've made over the past few years about trying to bring attention to stolies, to the consequences of high, driving at high rates of speed in the city of Milwaukee and running from the police. And the consequences that came from those actions was often death to the driver of those vehicles, to the passenger of those vehicles, and very often innocent bystanders who just happened to be driving during that time period. And just recently, a pursuit cost the life of one of our own police officers. So it's important for us to be able to have an intelligent conversation about what the risks are, what the police will actually do, and the ability of you all of being able to spread the message of comfort and stability in our neighborhoods just through being able to control reckless driving. So it's important for us to have a very public conversation about this and to bring in the people who are actually committing some of these offenses and having them understand what the consequences are, especially when the loss of life has been a very familiar end to this type of activity. So at this time, we want to be able to start this off with being able to have our chief, Chief Morales, kind of give the current state of what the police pursuit policy is uh, and where we should go from here. So at this time, Chief Morales. Thank you all very much. Uh few things. The public has to understand that when you drive recklessly, 
you're driving a four to 5,000 pound bullet. You put lives at risk. There was a time when we didn't chase people and we've shown that that is also creates a uh, public health hazard when people drive around and put other lives at risk by driving recklessly. That has to stop. But people have to know of the city of Milwaukee that we will chase and we're going to chase you. You have an obligation, whether you have a license or not, to pull over when the police try to pull you over. Red lights and siren mean you pull over. And our goal is that through this message, you understand that that's your obligation. And if you don't pull over, the penalty increases by making that a felony. We can't put other, continue to put other lives at risk, including your own, and we have to stop this activity. We're going to continue to go after you and understand that the penalty will increase when you don't stop. Thank you. I'm reading a statement on behalf of all the commissioners of the Fire and Police Commission. In response to the public outcry regarding reckless driving and to individuals blatantly flouting the law, the Commission issued a directive to Chief Flynn to change the pursuit policy in July of 2017. The revised policy was issued in September of 2017. That same month, the Commission sent a letter to the Public Safety and Health Committee encouraging further discussions surrounding the issue and encouraging problem-oriented solutions to curtail reckless driving, including enhanced technologies, prevention through information campaigns and driver's education, and methods to prevent reckless driving in the first instance. The Commission has repeatedly stated that pursuits are not the ideal way to address the problem of reckless driving, but we wanted to empower our officers to use their judgment to address the issue. For the safety of the driver and any passengers, the community, and the police, we strongly encourage drivers to pull over if an officer attempts to stop you. Thank you. Thank you. So the message, uh, I think, is very clear. As Chief Morales said, when the lights and sirens go on, pull over for your sake and the sake of all of us. That is the message we want to convey, and that is the message that the Milwaukee Police Department will enforce. So with that, uh, I'd be more than happy to any of us to field any questions. Chief, uh, the concern always was that innocent people will end up being caught up in these chases and sometimes killed or badly hurt. How has that changed? We've had several accidents when we didn't chase. So you're still putting somebody at risk by driving recklessly, whether we chase or we don't chase. In fact, that increased. In, uh, injuries increased, and the, uh, the, the, the traffic hazards that are being caused by the reckless driving, uh, I think it's worse prior than not chasing. We have to at least go back to chasing and find uh, better, uh, better ways of doing it in future and looking at technology, which we will be doing. Uh, but we just can't do nothing about it. Police department's obligation is uh, the, the safety of the public. So we can't go on ignoring this behavior. We have to do something about it. There was someone who ran a red light uh, just recently, and a woman was killed by the person who ran that red light. Talk to us about that particular instance. Well, just re recklessness in itself. Uh, again, a, a vehicle is a four to 5,000 pound uh, bullet when you operate it that way. You can't go around driving around recklessly and putting other lives at risk. And that's, uh, those are the charges we're going to be going after uh, when you put other lives at risk. Uh, this weekend, there was a pursuit that lasted quite some time. Uh, that person is in custody for over $10,000 bail, and he's looking at recklessly endangering safety charges as well. So we're not just going to uh, do traffic laws. If you drive around recklessly, you put uh, the public at risk, we're going to be dealing with you accordingly. Are you concerned that the courts will not stand by you? The policy changed because the public wanted it to change, and the public will also push uh, the, the other the courts to do as well. It's not my job to influence other other people other than to do my job, and my job is to keep the safety of the public. Chief, has there been any discussion about the regional pursuit policy for suburban walking agencies for having a unified approach to 
we haven't had the chance to get together and, and go over it, but I will tell you that uh, the, the county uh, law enforcement agencies, uh, the county sheriff's department, the state patrol, we all are, are working collabor collaboratively to uh, work on the uh, traffic hazards that are being caused by the reckless driving. And understand that some of this reckless driving is uh, the mobile drug market. It is uh, people involved in uh, carjackings and auto thefts. And the reason being is uh, they think that we're not allowed to chase them. And uh, you get involved in the mobile drug market when you believe that the police is not going to pull you over. Well, we are going to pull you over, and we are going to go after you, and we are going to, uh, uh, you know, charge you with those cases. Uh, I, I don't have that data for you now, uh, but we, we are monitoring that data. Uh, we do uh, uh, see, uh, I can tell you that the pursuits have increased uh, since we've uh, changed the policy last fall. And uh, I will tell you this, that also uh, there is a, a, a recognition by the, those subjects that thought they could flee um, where uh, they, they are pulling over and bailing out of the car. It's not uh, a good behavior, but it actually is a, a better idea than to uh, use the vehicle, as I, I continue to say, uh, uh, a bullet. So uh, I'd rather have somebody uh, get out of the car than to uh, use that vehicle as a weapon. What will the new public information campaign tell the residents of Milwaukee? Fleeing is dangerous, and it's on you. It's not on the police. You make that choice whether uh, you're going to flee or not, and we will hold you accountable. How significant are the additional penalties for executive They're very significant. Uh, we are uh, going uh, and looking at the laws we have, and there's plenty of laws out there. A recklessly endangering safety uh, uh, charge is much more serious, uh, even though fleeing is a felony, a recklessly endangering safety charge is much greater. You're asking me to answer for Greenfield's actions, uh, Greenfield Police Department's actions. At, at the end of the day, the driver decided to flee, and it cost that driver's life. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.